guys, it's finally here. I just left the interstate right onto the gravel road, headed up the summit road to Mount Emily. Mount Emily Elk Hunt. Opening day is tomorrow. Part of the crew's up here already. Adam and I were talking earlier and it's windy. There's snow everywhere where we've been scouting. So that's gonna make life interesting. They're trying to get camp set up right now, so I'm gonna run up the road here and try to find them and see if I can't lend them a hand, but it's finally here. Opening day, tomorrow morning. Woohoo! Here we go. So opening day was interesting as I indicated in that opening monologue, the wind was blowing and this is a massive camp tent that we got at Cabela's that we were trying to get set up and I didn't make it up there before they got the tent already set up but I guess it almost blew Adam off the top of the mountain which would have been super unfortunate but they were able to get it down and get it all set up and we got all cozied up inside there and got everything ready to go before we headed out for the first night right at sunset to do a little bit of scouting and see if we were able to find anything. We didn't see any groups that evening. Mostly we were checking road access and how bad the snow had been overnight. Opening day, we decided to take our first stab at Shimmyhorn Ridge. Access was very limited due to snowfall and lots of blown down trees, but we'd seen some groups of elk out there in prior scouting trips, and so we were interested to get back out there and see if we could find any. We had to cut our way through roads, and it was super exciting to be involved in that process. But we did make it out there and get some good vantage points, glassed all over different ridges and across the huge canyons that you find out here in the Mount Emily Elk Wilderness areas. Just looking for bulls, looking for groups of elk, any sign we could find, and really just enjoying being out there in the woods together in such a great and beautiful bit of country. Perhaps the greatest irony in the entire trip was that we were glassing ridges far away like this one. You can see when it comes back into focus here that you know, you're just looking clear across those hillsides trying to see if you can find a group of elk somewhere. And then when you least expect it, somebody takes a look right down below where you've been standing and glassing the ridges miles away and tucked in the trees less than 100 yards below you, you find your first group of elk. What started as two cows bedded down in the trees beneath us eventually morphed into multiple elk and a decent bull tucked back up into the trees where we could never get a good look at him. Ultimately, we decided he wasn't the type of elk that we were after here on this hunt, especially on opening day. And we ended the day glassing more and more ridges, looking for more and more bulls. After having zero luck on opening day, the boys continued to hunt hard and unfortunately they just could not find any of the elk. They went down all of the places that we thought the elk would be, ventured down into Hell Hole, which is an amazing canyon, and just looked all over, everywhere between Huckleberry Mountain, down into Hell Hole, and ultimately settling in on what I like to call the Mount Emily Triangle, which is the area between Thimbleberry, Hell Hole, and Huckleberry. And finally, there they were. The bulls were very, very far away from the vantage point where they were first spotted, but finally we were in the middle of elk. The canyons were huge, the hillsides were steep, 
There was really no way of knowing whether or not we could get to the shots that we wanted to have, but at least finally, for the first time, we were seeing elk. Having finally spotted bulls the day before, we attacked the Mount Emily Triangle from all sides. We separated our group into multiple vantage points to see who would be the first to get eyes on the bulls. What's up guys? Mount Emily elk hunt is underway. I was up opening morning before I had to go back into school. We saw a small group with a little raghorn bull. We didn't see much on Thursday and then yesterday at the end of the day they spotted a couple decent groups of bulls. So now we're out in these big canyons. Glassing. My walkie-talkie's blowing up this morning. We're, we're kind of staged up at different locations. The four of us are all trying to get eyes on as many things as possible. I've been running the traditional elk playbook, just trying to glass, see if we can find a bull and get in range of a shot. I'm hearing reports of people seeing six by sixes so far. I think somebody ran into the game warden yesterday and he said that somebody got a eight by seven, I think, tagged out with an eight by seven earlier this 2019 season already. So within the first, I guess it'd be the first three days. It's on, man. It's starting to snow. You can see the cloud line on the ridges behind me like it's so fun to be up here like it's just absolutely beautiful and I am just anxiously hoping that we can find the type of animal that we'll be excited to go after so we'll keep you posted on what we find while I was unable to see any bulls from my vantage point that morning Everyone else in the group saw at least one, and we ultimately settled in on this vantage point as a good place to start making a plan. You're looking at the backside of Huckleberry Mountain. Viewed from a ridge or two over from the top of Hell Hole, and from this vantage point, we saw multiple groups of elk, and the excitement began to build. In search of a better vantage point on the groups that we had spotted, we found our way to this ridge, which is overlooking Hell Hole, a thousand foot drop, and right across from us, in the trees, we spotted our first bull of close proximity. It was an exciting way to end that day, and ultimately we decided that it was not the bull for us to go after but at least we had finally found our way into the country where the elk were. The plan for Sunday morning was a pretty simple one. We were going to double down on the bulls we had seen between the bottom of Hill Hole Canyon and the top of Shimmy Horn Ridge. Ultimately, Adam decided to drop down into the canyon to try and find the bulls he had spotted the day before and be within range, which he was able to do. But unfortunately, when he closed the window on the bull he was looking for, he was unable to find a steady shot and ended up losing the animal. Into the tree line at the last moment, after hours hiking out of the canyon, we were frustrated and wondering what we were going to do for the rest of the day. That morning I had been stationed at the top of Hill Hole Canyon, back where we spotted the bull the day before. He was still there, but again we still felt that he was not the animal for us. Unfortunately, after we left this vantage point, I left my glasses laying on the rock. So after Adam's long hike out of the canyon, as we were debating what to do, I decided it was time to go back and pick up my glasses before we forgot. As I was walking back after picking up my glasses, I looked one last time across this finger canyon that I had looked at multiple times before. 
every time thinking, man, wouldn't it be great if there was a bull right over there? It's not that far away. There's road access to the backside. It would be perfect. And then there he was. Nestled in the trees on the far side of the canyon, we found this bull. I set up the spotting scope and snapped this quick picture. And within five to ten minutes, Adam and Garrett joined us from this new vantage point. Unfortunately, the bull had gotten up and moved, and Mark was able to find him further down the Finger Canyon moments later. When Adam and Garrett arrived, the bull was tucked behind a tree, but I was confident that he had not yet moved since there was open ground all around. As Adam set up the rifle just in case, moments later, the bull stepped out from the top of the tree into this clearing. As I whispered, there he is, and got the spotting scope on him, I heard Adam whisper, plug your ears. Moments after that, the first shot rang out. As the first shot missed, the bull turned and looked in our direction. I heard the rifle cycle, and the second shot rang out. I watched the whole thing through the spotting scope as the bullet stuck, struck true, and the elk began to fumble his way uphill, before ultimately tumbling down the steep hillside. And just like that, our Mount Emily elk hunt was over. The months of planning, the trips to the range, sighting in the rifles, the scouting with the kids and with great friends, the scheming and dreaming, all culminated in this one final moment, a successfully harvested animal on the ground. Within the next 24 hours, a major winter storm would blanket northeastern Oregon, completely changing the environment we had been hunting in. Had we not taken this animal, heaven only knows what the rest of our hunt would have entailed. Congratulations, Adam, on a successful Mount Emily elk hunt. It is certainly an adventure that we will all remember.